Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Forebear here, and today we're going to take a look at the showcase sensitive cannon fodder that was just put out a little while ago, going over a ton of the stuff that was shown off at E3 for Halo Infinite. Let's dig into it. Okay guys, and here we are, the showcase sensitive issue of cannon fodder. This one, like I said, is going to cover a ton of the E3 news that we got, uh, specifically lore stuff for the things we've already seen. Uh, also a few, a few new little tidbits here and there. So first up, we have this really cool look at the commander for the Academy in Halo Infinite's multiplayer. It reads, in Halo Infinite, you are part of a new wave of Spartan IV super soldiers, starting your training journey at a hidden facility on a frontier world, preparing to replenish the ranks of humanity's heroes. Preparing to write a new chapter in our fight against relentless and imposing opposition, proving yet again that humanity doesn't really like being on the back foot for long. Your journey begins at the Avery J. Johnson Academy of Military Science. Spartan Agrina, I believe is how you pronounce her name, I could be completely wrong on that, but to guide you through your early days in the process, you'll be meeting Lorette Agrina, Spartan Academy Commander. As we have shown over in glimpses over the last few years, the Master Chief and other UNSC forces have embarked on a daring mission to stop Cortana's efforts to bring a cold and unforgiving order to the galaxy. With the Chief and other heroes occupied both at Zeta Halo and elsewhere across the galaxy, the need to train and prepare a new generation of Spartan super soldiers has fallen on the very capable shoulders of Spartan Agrina, who is no stranger to what it means to have heroes that can be relied on. After enduring many challenges of her own, she's now the one helping give others new chances to make a difference. And this is her, man. I think I think she looks fantastic. I, I do love her voice. I know some people weren't thrilled with her. I think I think that I think that she looks and sounds fantastic. Guys, just look look at the fidelity here. This is unreal, man. Unreal. Here, I'll, I'll turn this off so you get a good look. Boom, man. What a good what a good thing to have here. A strong, powerful commander, Spartan in charge, leading the Academy Initiative. So the next thing we're gonna take a look at is the armor that we get to see here. So the biggest things that we're going to touch on are the armor variants. Uh, there are some really cool lore tidbits, but I definitely recommend going and checking out all of those. We're not going to read through all of them, uh, just the ones a little bit further down in the article here. So here we have the aviator, very, very cool. Uh, very specifically, just the aviator helmet. The rest of the suit is not the aviator. This is, of course, the Mark VII core, but the rest of the armor looks to be you know, pretty pretty standard issue Mark Seven core armor. Next up, we have the Zvezda faceplate, which is this helmet. Very cool. Looks a lot like the EVA from Halo Three meets the EVA from like Halos Four and Five. Kind of cool, cool helmet here. I really like this a lot. Here we get a look at the Soldier helmet. The newest iteration of the Soldier helmet features a new revision of materials groups. Uh, combat catalyst firmware. I do like the soldier helmet. I, I think I prefer Halo 4's soldier helmet. Uh, it's probably my only armor set that Halo 4 had that I actually enjoyed, but very cool nonetheless. And of course, there are always additional attachments and items that Spartans can leverage to optimize their presence on any battlefield. Take the Spartan Below, for example, outfitted in the best color, orange, equipped with elements such as the Mark 7 with UAARMET helmet attachment, AAP ordnance pack, UA Viator shoulder pad, and transhumeral prosthesis. And hey, that S7 sniper rifle isn't too shabby either. This looks absolutely fantastic, guys. I am going crazy for this Spartan, man. Look, look at this cool, this cool setup we got here. So we have the, the helmet attachment here on the visor. I really like that. The skin on the S7 sniper rifle looks great. The shoulder pad, I really do like the shoulder pad a lot. We've seen a little bit of this in some of the multiplayer footage that we've gotten. And then the uh, prosthetic arm here looks absolutely fantastic. It looks super cool, super modern. Uh, I'm definitely down for something like that. Uh, and then a little bit more customization down here on the hip. I think, I think that this looks stunning, guys. So moving on, we have weaponry thinking. Care for a little info on a couple of featured tools of the trade? We thought you might. 
The Skewer. It's a Jarl Hanai design originated from before their alliance with the Covenant. The Skewer is an anti-tank spike cannon used by banished packs for anti-personal tasks. The massive sharpened projectile is devastating, more than a match for titanium alloy armor at range, but reloading is a difficult task. So the interesting thing, right, is we've seen concept art for this guy, and it looks like it's the size of a rifle, right? It looks like it would just be a large, you know, almost a, a, a weapon that would be wielded in one hand by a brute, but would maybe be large enough that it would need to be held like a rifle for a Spartan. But as we have now seen, it is enormous. It is shoulder mounted. Uh, that's what that's what this section here is for. And it looks like it takes a Spartan almost two hands to even pull a trigger when someone is using it, guys. It's absolutely insane. I love the way this looks. The next up is the VK-78 Commando, manufactured by Vakara Gemsh... I'm saying it wrong. V VK-78 Commandos were selected by the CMA Frontier Forces to replace their antiquated stocks of HMG-38s in 2485. The HMGs are another automatic weapon in the Halo universe that have been around in comics for a long time, guys. It's really cool to see that get referenced here. Next up, vehicular vices. Of course, it wouldn't be Halo without a variety of stalwart steeds to ride into battle with. Let's take a look at some of those examples now. Banshee, Kalem Workshop, Attack Flyer. The Banshees that dominate the local banished occupation fleet have been thoroughly optimized to increase armor and combat durability, but also to maintain the base chassis' core performance aptitude. Guys, this looks, this looks nutty. This looks so good. I love the like faceplate that this has here and the way that the cannons are designed now. I'm, I'm in love. I'm in love with this Banshee, guys. The Chopper. Get to the Chopper! Bolrosi Workshop, Attack Bike. The shared knowledge of six disparate clans contributed to the refined and imposing chopper design that now permeates the banished ranks. Its raw firepower and visceral locomotion provide their forces with the perfect tool for both breaching and demoralizing any enemy presence. Guys, again, man, this looks so good. I am stoked. A lot of you know Halo 3 is like my favorite Halo game. The chopper has to be my favorite vehicle in the franchise, period. I am so glad to see it return. I really hope that they do it justice in Infinite. The Ghost from Ryukta Workshop, Scout Bike. The Ghost has proven to be as versatile a mainstay in the banished garages as it was within the Covenant. This particular iteration focuses on forward armor while also providing enhanced firepower. It looks absolutely stunning. Man, it has like the same combat faceplate that the Banshee has. This really does just look like a smaller ground uh, a banshee. I'm super into it. I love I love the uh, the parallels being drawn between all of the vehicles here. The Wasp, AV-49 Attack VTOL. Fast to produce and easy to maintain and optimize, the AV-49 has seen increased widespread use in environments and scenarios where versatility and low profile operations are at a premium. This is the Wasp. This doesn't look like it's changed much if at all from its Halo 5 design, and we've seen a few things like like the turret that we've seen in the Vidoc and things like that that didn't get uh, a, a shift to a more traditional style, art style, uh, like a lot of things have. But I, I dig this. I, I love the Wasp. I think this, this is going to be a lot of fun. It's like a mongoose up in the sky. The Razorback M15 Light Tactical Vehicle. Originally a specialized offshoot of the traditional Warthog, the latest Razorback model is the result of a robust design study that incorporated learnings from rigorous testing programs on several virtually uncharted worlds. Even without onboard weapon systems installed, the up-armored design and increased payload capacity makes the Razorback an equally viable option on the battlefield alongside its more ubiquitous porcine cousin. Making it personal is what we have next. This is about the AI companions that you're going to have in multiplayer. A lot of this has to do with uh, just Lumu. Lumu constructs share a common citation calculus core with AI used in the fields of finance, proving a distinctive cost-benefit approach to decision-making assistance. That being said, they aren't quite as fun at parties. This is taking AIs and a more rudimentary version of them rather than just the smart AIs that Cortana kind of dominated when she took over all of the AIs at the end of Halo 5. Uh, this, this maintains a limited integration for these AIs. They are more rudimentary constructs. So it's, it's gonna be really cool to see how these kind of play in to any sort of lore 
you know, we have the weapon in the campaign that's very, very exciting stuff, guys, that it's not like AI is, is completely gone, right? Like, a lot of foundational systems in the 26th century require the use of these AI, so it's really cool that, that you know, they are still being used in some capacity, and we get to see that with AIs like Lumu. Map Wrap. We'll look to dive a bit more into some of the deeper fictional foundations to be found in Halo Infinite's multiplayer play spaces later down the road, but here's a little dab of detail to hold you over for now. Behemoth. It has survived for a hundred millennia, but this ring still holds fast to secrets yet unknown. This looks so cool. I dig the desert slash beach vibe of this map that, that very clearly takes place on on uh, uh, Zeta Halo, I'm, I'm extremely excited to, to jump in here. Fragmentation. Now more than ever, Installation 07's serene surface belies a deeper strain and conflict. I love the way this map looks, guys. It reminds me of like Timberlands meets, you know, Valhalla meets Blood Gulch. I think, I think that this looks great. Recharge. Finally, we have a name for the map that we've seen for nearly a year. Resource infrastructure facilities such as those run by Axie's Hydroelectric Division help maintain stable energy grids for colony worlds throughout the UEG. Live Fire. Instructors at the Avery J. Johnson Academy of Military Science ensure their Spartans are prepared for any challenge that a hostile galaxy throws at them. It's very cool that we get a name for all of these maps, guys. I love, I loved looking at this map in all of the trailers that we've gotten over the last few weeks. Very, very cool stuff. Bizarre. The East African Protectorate's plan to rebuild the glassed urban core of Mombasa was ambitious and expensive, but Project Rebirth investment by the UEG and UNSC activity at the nearby Voy accession has revitalized some sections of the metropolis. This is probably the most exciting one that we get here, guys. This is a first look at what is basically new, new Mombasa. I love that some of these buildings still look old and ruined and tattered, uh, almost like they were left, if, if a building was left standing after the attack by the Covenant in 2552, then they went ahead and left it up and then rebuilt around it. And you can see in the background here in this image that there is some reconstruction effort going on. So it's very cool to see some of the like lower districts still here. You know, we have Cuckoo's Cafe down here. We have the Roost Star, which has to be a reference to Rooster Teeth. The logo even looks like it could technically be kind of uh, a nod towards Rooster Teeth. You gotta love this stuff, guys. You gotta love this stuff. A lot of these maps look like they have a lot of life in them. Bizarre especially. It does remind me a lot of a Counter-Strike map, but I think that's probably the the goal here is to is to give is to give players that maybe haven't played a ton of Halo but have played other FPS games a comfortable feeling. And that's basically it for Halo Infinite. They do kind of touch on the campaign section that we got to see. Unfortunately, no questions are answered, but Grim does say uh Suffice it to say, these won't remotely be the last questions you have as we head into this next chapter of the Halo universe. A lot of really cool stuff, guys. The rest the rest of the cannon fodder is basically uh, just a reminder, hey, Season 7's coming up. Here's some lore about what Season 7 is all about with all of the cool Elite customization coming up. Uh, and then, of course, Pixel Flare's stunning wallpapers that he's put out for each of the seasons, uh, most of these being uh, retroactive because he was hired only, you know, so recently. And then one last little thing here is Haruspus's uh, reading of the Flood Arrive, um, a, a short story in Halo Evolutions called Soma the Painter. I highly recommend you go check it out. Horuspus uh, is a very cool guy. His blog is awesome. He, he speaks elegantly and eloquently and beautifully. Man is, man is awesome. But that's it, guys. That's the cannon fodder for this week. A ton of really cool stuff. I, I think my favorite thing in here is getting a good look at the vehicles, the maps, the skewers, and, and of course, getting names for the maps. That That is has always been one of those things that interests uh, me a, a ton for some reason, but I do I do really dig getting a, a good look at, at the multiplayer maps. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, guys. Don't forget, you can always come and follow me on Twitter at Forebear. You can find me on Twitch. I will be streaming tonight, twitch.tv slash Forebear. Uh, and of course, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I hope I hope that you've enjoyed us taking a look at this cannon fodder together. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. 
Halo Infinite, guys. It's right around the corner. Don't forget to sign up to be a Halo Insider so you don't miss out on any of the cool flighting, okay? Until next time, guys, be safe, have fun. I love you all.